Hello again, Ashton High School. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed the other three videos up to this point. I know that was a lot, but I wanted to go ahead and just take a moment and go through Math Excel with you. So that way you know how to utilize Math Excel and you completely understand what your expectations are. So when you log into Math Excel, this is the course home. This is the home page. Honestly, I, I, I don't care about this page. This really means nothing to me. The bulk of what you need to do is right here when you're on test and homework. Now you can set it up. It does say current assignments down there, but you can set it up to just go ahead and uh, have that at the top. But I would just always tell you, go ahead and click on test assignment. And then right there, you will have a list of all of the assignments that you need to do. Right now, you only have one if you are watching this at the time right away of everything. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna click on this assignment and it will show you all of the problems that you are expected to do. So I'll just go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. So you can see this assignment is 25 problems long. Uh, I can tell you, I do not expect you to complete this all in one sitting. This right here is just kind of an overview of how I expect you guys to understand how to use Math Excel and how to understand a lot of different things. And I just realized that there's something that uh, I don't have up right now and I'm gonna have to jump off camera just for two seconds here. I will need this keyboard to type in my answers here uh, very quickly. So uh, you can start wherever you want, but let's go ahead and let's start at question one here. If it will actually click on question one. All right. So you can see that the problem loads up right here uh, and it says solve the following equation. Now, the problems that you're gonna see on this first assignment, I hope you look at them and go, Really, Mr. Keith? Because that is how I want you to feel on this first assignment. I hope that when you look at this, you kind of go, yeah, I think I can do that without writing anything down. And this one, I 100% hope you can do this without writing anything down. So with that in mind, you can go ahead and you can just type in your answer. If you can see that in your head, subtract 12, divide by four, we can see that the answer here is, I clicked on the wrong thing, uh, that's what I meant to do, bring that back up. So the answer that we will need here is negative three. I didn't click on that, sorry. Negative three. And then from there, we can go ahead and we can hit enter and it will say, good job, thumbs up. So I wish it would say thumbs up, that would actually be kind of cool. But then you just click on next question and it will just take you right to the next question. You can see, hey, you know what? Uh, right there, again, looks pretty similar, looks pretty easy enough. So I can go ahead and add one, divide by five. Oh, it's gonna be a fraction. That's fine. So there are two ways you can tackle that. If you look right here, once you click into where it says the solution set is, you will see that there are all these options of ways that you can type your answer. You can type it as a square root, you can type it as an absolute value, you can type it as some more, some more stuff right here, lots of stuff but typically you shouldn't have to go beyond this. Uh, so right here, if I know I need a fraction, and I'm right there, I can go ahead and do that. I can click one, and just hit down, five, and then there's my answer. Now, alternately for fractions, you can hit one slash five, and it will turn that into a fraction for you. So that is a kind of cool feature that they, they've added on over the years. So that is something, but just be careful uh, when you're doing that. Always kind of double check before you hit that enter button. And then again, nice work. So let's go to this one now. And again, a little more complex. Now, there's a few things that I try to point out to students. There's a few things that I try to make sure students recognize in doing all this. Is that if I were to give you a textbook and I were to say here, I want you to do these 10 problems. What are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna take that textbook, you're gonna open it up to the page, you're gonna find the problems, you're gonna write down the problem, you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna wait till you see me, 
or you're going to look in the back of the book and then finally figure out what the answer is. It's like when you're using Math Excel, the expectation is you look at the problem. Maybe you can still do that in your head. Maybe we're still on the easy problems and you're going, yeah, I don't need to write anything down, Mr. Keith. I think I got that one. If you are in that boat, awesome. That's fantastic for you. If you're not, you're like, ah, you know what? That's a little more complex. I think you need to write something down. Then that's fine. You're going to write it down. You're going to do the work. The same as if I gave you a textbook. Here's the difference. Once you get that answer, now you're going to take that answer. You're going to come right here. You're going to say, okay, the answer is negative. Sorry, four. I the wrong button. The answer is negative four. Hit enter. And now you instantly know the answer. I couldn't be standing next to you in class and tell you the answer that fast. That is the advantage of Math Excel. That is the power of Math Excel. Now, this is a thing that we would have been using whether we were in person or virtual. So it doesn't matter which way this ended up happening. You would have had this software no matter what. Now, let's talk about this problem. Let's go ahead and let's say you did this problem and you go, ah, clearly I can see that answer is 21. Oh, ooh, okay, my answer's wrong. Ah, okay, I missed a negative sign. Clearly, it's negative 21. Oh, dang it, I mistyped and I accidentally said negative two. I meant to say negative 21. So now we can all rejoice. Uh, 2t minus 8 equals 13 minus t. If you were having trouble seeing the problem, I know there were some, some issues there. You hit enter and, huh, I was wrong. Oh, I know what I did. Silly me, I'm looking at it, I see the answer is seven. Yeah, I thought that was a plus T. That was a plus T, it's a minus T. Silly me, I go ahead, I needed to add it and then divide by three. Of course, you're not done. You tried it, now try it again. There's a button right here that says similar question. Click on similar question, it gives you a similar question. But the math is different. Oh, I mean, I'm still going to add that T. Okay, so now I have 5T. Add that. Okay, the answer is 2. I hit 2, I hit enter. Now it tells me excellent. If you get it wrong, you're not done. You still got to finish it, you still have to do the problem. And that's why some students didn't, don't like Math Excel. If you've talked to some previous people who've taken college algebra, they go, oh, Math Excel. You know why they hate Math Excel? Because they have to actually you know, do it. They can't just write down numbers and then turn it in and then go, well, I got points for it. No, you have to do it right or it's gonna count it wrong. And then there. Now. If you happen to be playing at home and you go, oh man, Mr. Keith is losing it here. He just did it almost a fifth of the work for us. He already did four problems. Great. I know what the answer was. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go to number one and I just write down the answer he wrote and oh no, it's not the same problem. Oh man, I have to do the work. I can't just copy the answer that Mr. Keith wrote. Oh wait, it means I can't copy the answer my friend wrote. It, it makes you do the work. That's why I love Math Excel. Because you can't just copy from your friend. Your friend can do the entire assignment, great. Unless they wanna do your entire assignment can't just give you their answers. That's the advantage of Math Excel. That's why it honestly is great. 
because it makes you have to do it. You. It's pointing. It's off camera. So that's what I want you guys to recognize here is that, yes, you have to actually do the work. If that's a problem for you, email me. We'll, we'll talk. Now, here's the other nice thing about Math Excel. I want to go back a problem. I want to go back to that last time. You go, you know what? I'd really like some more practice with that. I messed up and I want to do another one. But when I but there's no other problems on the homework like it. But I really need another problem like that. Right? Right here, there's a button that says similar questions. I click on similar question and look, it gives me a similar question. You can redo the same problem as many times as you want. You can get as much practice as many times as you want. So that's the big thing that I try to tell students is I tell them, look, there's no limit. I might, have, I might for homework, only give you five problems sometimes. That, that honestly is some of the length of the assignments, only only about five problems. So with that, and I realize I'm, uh, this, this closeness is messing up the camera. I'm gonna have to fix that in the future. But I was like, the big thing that I try to tell students is that it's like, you can get as much practice as you want with Math Excel. I can keep, I can do this problem and then check the answer again and check the answer again and check the answer again. I can keep checking this as much as I want. Now, let's go ahead and I want to jump to a later problem in this. I want to jump to, uh, I think question 18 does uh, save the best score. It doesn't matter. It's going to be raised all these. All right. So find the equation. That's not what I wanted. That is something you need to do. That is something I definitely want you to do. Um, am I going the wrong way? Ah, I went the wrong way. Ah, it doesn't do that. I'd do the same thing if you were in class. I just want you to get that in-person feel here. All right. So find the slope and y-intercept of the line. Graph the line. OK? So right here, you can click here to enlarge the graph. All right, just to make it bigger. So um, the equation here, if you can't see it, it's 1 half y equals x minus 5. Well, we'd have to multiply everything by 2 in that case, so we get y equals 2x minus 10. OK, my y-intercept is negative 10. So if I want to graph this here, notice there's all these graphing buttons right here. I click on the line because it told me it's a line, but hopefully we know that from the equation. I click on the line, I say, okay, negative 10. Nope, that's not negative 10. Oops, I need to clear that. Click on line, negative 10. There's my first point. Okay, we just said it's a slope of two. So I'm gonna rise two, one, two, run one. This is a whole lot easier. This is a whole lot easier you know, if you have a mouse, like even the tracking pad is better than me touching this. But I click save. There's the line I can double check. Yep, slope of two. I was like my y-intercept negative 10. Click on check answer. It's right there. So I have to do almost the same thing if I was doing this on paper. I have to find the y-intercept. And then I have to find another point, And then I have to graph the line. Now, I would much rather you do this on paper. But this is an OK substitute for, for, for the situation we find ourselves in. So that's the big thing. Now, maybe you look at these problems and you go, you know, Mr. Keith, I need some help. I'm not, I'm not the best at graphing lines. I was like, so I need some help. Well, the nice thing is there's a question help right here. Now, textbook. Nah, I left it there. It's not the best. View an example. I like this one. If I click on view an example, 
it will literally walk you through step by step. It will remind you about slope intercept form. And then you click continue and it will kind of remind you, okay, well, hey, that was the slope. That was the Y intercept. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that point where the Y intercept was and then I'm gonna find my other point and then that makes a line right there. It will walk you through step by step how to do this. Now, sometimes the view and example is not the exact way that I did it in class. That doesn't mean that it's a bad way, it just means it's different. So realize that there's help right there. You don't even have to go to your notes to get the help with this. Now, let's look at some of these other things. There's the help me solve this right here. I left that there and it kind of like fills in the blanks, like you kind of fill in the blanks as you go along that will help you solve this. But it's not great and I think it only gives you half credit. So, hold on. All right, you can see my screen was messed up. There. Um, so, I, I don't use this, uh, this help me solve this. I would suggest, I should say, I would suggest don't use help me solve this because you will have to click on similar question to get all of your points. There's a calculator, there's a built in calculator. Hopefully, you have a calculator. You don't need that, but I, I went ahead and I reactivated it for it. And here's the nicest thing here's the best thing of all. You get to this point, you're like, you know what? I, I tried to view a help, view an example, it just didn't work. I really need to ask Mr. Keith a question. Ask my instructor. You can have it email me directly from Math Excel. And I'm always going to tell you when you're using Math Excel, if you have a different question about a lesson or something like that, email me however you want. But always use this Ask My Instructor button with Math Excel because it will send me the problem. It will send me this problem so I know exactly what your problem looked like. If you don't use this, you're like, I didn't know how to do number 22 on the homework. I don't know what your numbers are. So I can I can I can look at the problem and I can tell you, well, you gotta find the slope, you gotta find the y-intercept. Um, and then you're gonna use those things to graph. Remember, you graph the y-intercept on the y-axis. And I mean I can say those things, but I can't really help you with that. I can't help you directly with that problem. So those are the things to keep in mind. That's why I always try to encourage students to use the ask my instructor button. Uh, when sending me problems here. Now, you didn't have to zoom in, and honestly, I don't think zooming in necessarily is always that great. Um, the, the click to enlarge this graph. Um, if I just click over here, I can do the same thing with all those. So that's kind of just the bare bones of Math Excel. Like I said, I talked a little bit about why I love Math Excel. Talked about some reasons why, if you've heard some bad things from students, why they dislike Math Excel. Um, they dislike it because it actually makes them have to do it. That's the big reason why. So we'll be using this, especially uh, in the beginning, quite a bit because it's it's really good with some of these basic problems. Once we get to maybe some more of the advanced stuff, um, yeah, I might have to give you some some supplemental things, and and they won't always look like this. So uh, that's the big thing that I wanted you guys to kind of see and be aware of with Math Excel just have a good idea of how it works. And again, we're not in person. You're gonna have some questions. Feel free, ask me some questions. There's gonna be some times you, you mistype stuff and you misclick and everything else. And like I said, one, if you run out of chances, always use that uh, similar question and redo the problem, get it right this time. If you, now, if you keep getting it wrong, email me, okay? Email me, I'm happy to jump on with a Google Meet or anything and help explain how to do that problem if you're having some mistakes here. Um, if this video was kind of shoddy, then I mean, I, I can see that sometimes it keeps whitewashing. Like I said, and I have to just kind of have it readjust the colors here. Um, I move the camera closer to zoom in and see some of these things, but I can see that sucks. So uh, this video was a little bit longer than I meant for it to be because I, I went on some things that I think were very important about Math Excel that I wanted you guys to understand. So, move that back there, fix the screen. Um, I think I have to adjust some blinds too and everything. So um, with that, until next time, I will bid you adieu. Stay safe out there after.